Hey guys, Andy Hake here with InsulWise in Pittsburgh. And what we're going to show you today is how we take a Cape Cod style home and make it far easier to cool in the summertime as well as heat in the wintertime. Now, anyone that has a Cape Cod style home knows that they are kind of tricky to, to work on, work in, and, and they don't heat and cool real efficiently. And the reasons for that are you've got slope ceilings, um, you've got knee wall spaces here. These knee walls actually have built in closets back here that we're going to be working in. And the end result is that you've got a roof out here that's allowing heat from the sun to radiate right into the space here, which makes it really hard to be comfortable. And to illustrate what we mean by heat, we're going to show you with an infrared camera. This is what an area of insulate, missing insulation looks like. It's currently reading at 108 degrees. We're going to pan across here. You can see other areas where the insulation is degraded. It's reading about 97 degrees. This is a, a dormer ceiling that seems to be uninsulated. This is 107 degrees. As we pan across some more, you see other areas of missing insulation. And again, you see temperatures uh, in the high 90s to the low 100s. And the end result is that this homeowner is going to struggle to cool this structure. So we're going to show you the before, during, and after of this process, how exactly we do it. But the main thing to keep in mind is that our processes don't just work for Cape Cods. We can replicate this result in any type of home that has cooling problems in the summer or heating in the winter. So now it's time to do the install at this homeowner's house. As you can see, it's awful hot up here right now. We're sweating our butts off. Um, so again, this is a Cape Cod style home that we're re-insulating today. And the goal is to make this structure much easier to cool in the summertime for the homeowner without having to use the air conditioner nearly as much. And the work that we do is also going to make it much easier to heat during the winter time, again, without using the furnace as much. So before you insulate any type of a home or structure, you need to first identify and uh, determine what your air and thermal barrier is going to be. Now, in a Cape, style, Cape Cod style home like this, you can see there's an attic space out here. There's a bunch of old insulation in there right now. That's often how that looks. We're going to dense pack under the subfloor with cellulose insulation. Bat the back sides of these knee walls with fresh, fluffy, thick R19 fiberglass bats. Air seal the transition gaps underneath the knee walls. We're going to show you what that looks like as well. Dense pack this slope ceiling section right here with cellulose insulation. We're going to take care of this old crappily insulated knee wall access door that someone stapled some old bats to. We're going to put two inch thick R10 rated foam board on the back of that. We're going to come across eventually uh, cut an access into this upper main attic so that we can air seal the can lights in that as well as insulate that space and then come over to here and we have a another knee wall attic access here that we've cut and just by going into the space here we're going to insulate these other spaces on either side of the dormer by crawling underneath that window right there and it's not the most fun work but it's what we do every day and we're going to show you this process step by step. Now what we're doing is installing a series of slant back vents across the front and back of the house because these knee wall attics are going to be isolated individual attics. They're not conditioned and that means they need to be ventilated. The reason is it allows the heat from these spaces to dissipate in the summer but more importantly it allows any moisture that it would ever wind up in one of these spaces to easily vent to the outside and reduce the chance of mold growth. Now we're actually inside the knee wall space and a critical thing for these types of homes is this gap that you can see here that's directly below the knee wall. We call this a floor transition gap and we call it that because this is where interior conditioned air over here transfers into unconditioned air over here on this side inside the attic. So it's really not complicated but it's a critical step to fit a foam board or some type of blocking that's solid from an air infiltration standpoint down into the, the bay itself and then uh, this one's a little bit tricky because there's a the framing there and then just use some type of a foam often we just use great stuff right off the shelf and you're going to see i'm just going to go around 
this thing. This is going to permanently lock this into place as well as air seal it because what happens in the winter time is the homeowner wants to heat this second floor up here. And if you don't seal these giant gaps off, what happens is that the heat from the first floor comes up from below. And rather than heating this floor, it just goes whoosh right out through the vents into the attic, well, to the neighborhood, really. So after we air sealed the transition gaps underneath the knee walls, the next step that we did was we batted the back sides of the knee walls here with a new layer of R19 fiberglass insulation. That's going to really keep the heat from coming in and radiating through this wall. It's going to make the second floor much more comfortable. And we're also going to later cover it with a layer of home wrap that's going to protect it, hold it in place, and also act as an, uh, an outer air barrier to keep any airflow from the space from wind washing the fiberglass here. Now, uh, some people will ask, why didn't you spray foam the underside of the roof or insulate against the roof deck itself? The reason why is because we believe that if you're going to spray foam the underside of the roof, the only way to do it is with closed cell foam because closed cell foam has a vapor barrier in it. If you use open cell foam, there's a potential for water vapor that would get into this space to move through the foam, get trapped against the roof deck, and then cause the roof to rot. And closed cell foam is prohibitively expensive. So we can really move the needle for our homeowners in terms of efficiency and comfort gains just by using this process here. Um, other people might ask, well, did you put baffles in the slope ceiling going up to the main to transport air from this attic up to the lower attic? We didn't do that, and we typically don't. The reason why is because it's only a two by six rafter bay here, and baffles take up about two inches. So we would lose close to 50% of our R value by inserting baffles into the space. Additionally, these uh, slope ceiling bays usually have old insulation in them. They've got nails coming down from the roof, so it's virtually impossible to even get a baffle in there, much less attach it to the roof. So we don't do that. We rely on these individual attic spaces to be self-ventilated by installing roof vents like we showed you earlier. And if there's a moisture issue or heat needs to radiate, it just goes right out through the vent. Our next step is going to be going over this whole wall with a layer of home wrap. And we'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. We just finished this area of the knee wall attic. And as you can see, the knee wall hatch is now insulated with a two inch thick R10 rated piece of foam board. It's going to do a much better job than that old fiberglass that somebody had stapled onto there before. And the knee walls have now been insulated with R19 fiberglass and covered with a home wrap. And the attic floor has also been insulated with a thick layer of new cellulose insulation. This homeowner is gonna have a much better experience going forward. Right now we are dense packing down the slope ceiling bays in this Cape Cod. Stuff the top of it with some fiberglass so we don't get blowback. Turn the machine on. As you can see it's a dirty, difficult job to do. And if you don't have a dense pack hose like this, you often can't get by the miscellaneous debris that's in these slope bays like existing insulation, uh, nails coming down from the roof, etc. So we finished doing the insulation work here just a few days ago, and now we came back to evaluate it and see what kind of an impact it made on the upper floor of this Cape Cod home. So previously, when we went through on a hot day with the infrared camera, you could see hot spots everywhere. Now it's still a sunny 90 plus degree day in Pittsburgh, so it's very hot, and we're gonna see what the after effect is. Now you can see this time I'm actually not sweating in this video, so uh, hopefully that's indicative of the results that were made. Uh, the homeowner is still renovating everything, so they're not using their air conditioner at the moment. Now, here's the same infrared camera I used last time. And we're going to look at this window, and you can see how hot that is. Um, windows are always going to be the weak point in the thermal barrier of a home. And as I scan around it, you can see that the walls, the ceiling above, um, they're all much cooler than that window. The slope ceiling area, you don't see hot spots in. You can kind of vaguely make out the studs, but you don't see anything hot again until you get over to that window. And that's a really good indication of how much better insulated things are. The ceiling above was previously 110 degrees. 
Right now it's 84 degrees. Um, the home is still a little bit cool from last night. And that's a good thing. It means it's holding its temperature. And we'll pan across here and all the hot spots that were there previously. Are now gone, especially in these sloped ceiling areas where the roof is really only six inches away and the surface of the shingles outside right now are about 150 degrees, maybe 160. And the surface temperature of that wall is 84 degrees. And again, that's not using the air conditioner right now. The home is just holding on to the cool temperatures from last night much better than it was previously. So um, all of the measures that we did in this home from an insulation and air sealing perspective can be replicated really in any type of house here. And we can get you the same results that we got for this homeowner. So if you'd like InsulWise to come out to help make your home much easier to cool in the summer, as well as less expensive to cool or uh, easier to heat in the summer or easier to heat in the winter time and cooler then too, give us a call at InsulWise. The number's right here. And if you found this video helpful, please click the like and subscribe button. Thank you for your time.